All right, guys, we're going to do a practical 3D scanning walkthrough overview with the Einscan Libre and, of course, Eric Lau from Shining 3D. Great to have you here, Eric. Thanks for having me. As always, a pleasure. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually scan this entire forklift and we're going to use all three modes from the Einscan Libre. So just the infrared mode, the infrared adaptive with the lasers, and the 101 line laser mode to get some extra detailed parts down in there. And then we're going to take it into the software and we're going to put it all together into one. Eric, let's get started. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about the three modes we're gonna use and why we're uh, using all three for this particular object. Uh, so for the infrared rapid mode, mm -hmm. we're gonna use that mode to scan the area where the body of the forklift is uh, and where the person would be standing. And then for the areas that would be uh, more black and reflective, we're gonna be using the infrared adaptive laser line mode and then we're gonna switch over to the 101 laser HD mode and scan some of the areas that have a bit more features uh, so that when you want to actually look into uh, the smaller holes, we can get more detail to work off of for reverse engineering purposes. Yeah, okay, so the infrared really, you know, it's really good at tracking just basic features and curves and lines. And so mm -hmm. all this area is very simple plastic, it's not, very complex, uh, or it's not massively complex. So it'll track really easily and it'll get that data really fast, right? Yeah. And then obviously there's some issues here being black that doesn't like reflecting light. You need to use some lasers, some other stuff. We've got the markers already placed around. Uh, some of these are magnetic markers. Uh, we actually sell these also at visionminer.com. So if you have a nine scan or a free scan or any shiny 3D scanners, we sell the markers, magnetic markers and our special magnetic marker cubes pyramids and magnetic cubes so you can get those on the website uh, so we've already got that set up and then for the 101 laser lines where that just tracks uh, based on the geometry with the lasers this whole area has a lot of detail and it's got enough geometry for that to track well so let's do it okay let's get started so we're going to start off this new project with the infrared rapid mode we're going to use the feature alignment setting uh, we're going to be scanning at a resolution of 1.5 millimeters and we're going to turn texture on so that we can get the color data to work off as well. So we'll click start there and we're going to be giving the preview page of the scanner. Now you were mentioning earlier, like actually paying attention to the preview is a really good method. Why is that? The preview is really important because it helps us determine the path that we should take during the scan. Uh, because uh, oftentimes you might put the camera a little farther away or point it somewhere else and that's going to make your accuracy less. So you want to go through the preview and set your scanning path and ensure that you don't have any errors in uh, your camera focus so that you get the best data possible. So you could just start scanning, but it, it makes more sense to, to plan it out a little bit it really is that. So just you know, give it a one shot and then, all right, I know where I'm going and then hit it. Exactly. So now I've found a place here uh, where I'm getting the most amount of data and that's where I want to start. Because I know that if I ever lose tracking, I can always come back to this place uh, where there's a lot of data that I already have. So I clicked once to start the scan button and you can see on the screen all the data that's collecting. And it's interesting, just uh, in IR mode here, like there's no light that you can see that it's, that it's projecting, right? It's all infrared, so you can't necessarily see all the laser lines or the area. So you're watching the actual screen while you do the infrared mode. Okay, so now we've all captured right. all of the scan data for the body. And now we can move over Whew. to scan the- That process the, really fast. Yeah. Full color. Do we get uh, that side in there? This side we did not get, but we can always go back and capture a little Could bit more. Could we capture a little bit more? Yeah. Sweet, okay, so if you're examining your data and then you find, oh, I missed that spot or that area, then you can just go back and continue. Now, if you, left and went home and plugged it in, could you then still come back later and restart and, and get more? 
as long as the object hasn't moved uh, or nothing has changed in the objects, then you can restart the scan. Okay, okay. That's really important with markers because if you place a bunch of markers on something and then you take all the markers off, you're not gonna go back and scan with the same markers. But in this mode, since the geometry of the object is not gonna change, you could literally come back later and oops, get that area and you're good to go. There we go, now it's complete. We zoom in, you can see that that data has been filled in. There we go. Yeah, it's harder to tell in the texture because it's all dark. So we've got that, we've got the main body. What's the next mode? Infrared adaptive with the blue lasers included? Yep. Okay, and we've got our markers set up again along this whole area so that we can just scan it. So now in the data, you can see this is missing. So we're gonna go back. We're going to create a new project with the infrared adaptive mode. Uh, we're gonna choose marker alignments with 1.5. Well, actually, we're gonna bring this down. Well, we can choose 1.5 millimeter resolution. Click start. This is kind of a big deal what's happening now. We just switched from full infrared mode to an infrared adaptive laser mode. And then we're gonna do a laser mode on top of that. So that's three scanners in one. You get all of these types of technologies in one unit, which is relatively unheard of. It's just really, really a good workflow. It's an all-in-one thing that you can take anywhere and scan whatever you need in any mode, full color too. And so like even on the back here, we don't have that many markers, but there's enough geometry for it to still track, yeah? The field of view is large enough for it to capture all the surrounding data, even though there's no markers in that area. That's sweet. Okay, so now we've captured everything that uh, wasn't scanned in the previous one. We're gonna change to the laser HD mode and we're going to capture uh, an area of the model where we want the highest resolution for reverse engineering purposes. And in this mode, we can capture the color as well. Marker-free laser scanning. Beautiful with the Ion Scan Libre here at visionminer.com. I gotta say, that is a lot of laser lines. It's picking it up like nothing. Okay. Now we can take a look. This has the color in it, but we turn off the color and preview the data in the software. We're gonna be able to see that it's really high resolution data uh, and we can pick out the diameter of these quarter inch holes. Cool, all right. So could you also do the alignment and everything of all three scan modes on the device or do you have to? We have to do that on the computer. Cool, so if you're doing one scan in one mode and you do multiple scans, can you combine those on the device? Yes. Okay, but when you do three different modes, then plug into the computer, download the data, and do all the work there. So let's do that. Okay, so we're at the computer and we are gonna use the category seven cable uh, just to plug right back into here and download all the data onto the computer. Now that we've done that, you can see everything is totally not aligned. It's very much not where we want it to be. But the first step is actually generating point clouds. So we're gonna generate the point clouds. What does that actually do? So the generating point cloud process ensures that all of the points, measurement points that we took during the scan, uh, will be at the distance we set it at, which is at 1.2 millimeters. Got it. So it kind of, when we do the scan, it actually takes a lot of point clouds that are between 2.7 to 1.2, and now it's gonna make sure everything is uniform. Sweet, so we just one button click one on button each click. project. Okay, so now that that's done, we have to go and align the three different scans, right? Mm -hmm. The alignment process is the same as the other scanners that you've seen on our channel before. If you haven't already, we've got videos on every Shining 3D scanner that we carry. And uh, you can go check those out for more workflows, tips, et cetera, or just go to the website and buy one, or give us a call, shoot us an email, we'll consult you and see which one you really need. But you just come in here, you pick one project for one window, another project for the other, 
and then you can align it. And you always start with automatic alignment because there's a really good chance it'll be able to figure it out with the geometry. If that doesn't work, you can use markers or you can use manual mode. So we're just gonna do automatic the whole way through. Yep, automatic apply, then bring the third project in, automatic apply, and now they're all aligned. Beautiful. After I mean, that, uh, we're going to make it a mesh. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna convert all of the points into triangles. Okay, so yeah, that's important to note. So when you 3D scan something with an optical system like this or a CMM, you generate a point cloud, which is just a bunch of points in space. And what it's gonna do is connect the dots. It's gonna connect all those dots, make tessellations and create a STL, OBJ or 3MF mesh file. Uh, and that's what you can take into your reverse engineering program, or you can just export the point cloud, the, uh, uh, what is it, a P3 or an ASC file, you can use that too. You can take it into Geomagic, like Design X, Control X, or something like X model to reverse engineer it, and uh, you're pretty much good to go. But we can export the whole thing together as one part. But let's check this out. This is really, that's really nice, smooth. I mean, that's the inside. Obviously, we could go back and get the other side of the knob if we needed to, uh, but the data is there. And that, for little Easter egg for you guys, that little figurine in the, uh, the cup holder there, that is coal. So leave a comment down below saying how much you love coal, and uh, <laughs> we'll all get a good kick out of it. So then the next area that we did was the infrared adaptive with the lasers and markers. I mean, dude, that's some really good looking data. They even got the reflective stuff, maybe a little little more to be desired yeah, in there. Yeah, a little that... bit. We could, this was where the marker was, so they captured oh, that plate. But okay. if we removed that, we could have captured this. Uh, high, this was the shidiest part of yeah. the of the forklift. It's so, a hydraulic cylinder, it's yeah. as shiny as it gets. Cool, and then within the grates and everything, I mean, you can see the chain links, you can see everything uh, very good. And of course, if you wanted more detail, you could do that. Uh, and we scanned at a lower resolution here. Yeah, Very so just nice. to note, this is just at 1.2 millimeter resolution. Uh, we could go down to 0 0.05. Not for everything, but for specific areas, we could go down to 0 0.05, which is more than 10 times that what we're scanning here. And you'll notice the gaps where we had the little scanner pyramids, those can be filled in. If you're reverse engineering, just leave them blank because you don't need to add any data. But if you wanted to make like a 3D printable model of your forklift and you could fill everything in, make it a watertight thing, a little more process with that. Okay, so then the last area we did with the 101 laser lines, markerless, no tracking markers, came out beautiful. Plenty of data in there. What, what resolution was that? This was still at 1.2 millimeter resolution, okay. so not at the, still really low. But even with this one, you get a really nice um, data for the slots mm -hmm. of where the click, the snap-on fits are, yeah. and of the, um, the power charger. The power charger. Yeah, so you get all uh, the little details posted. of that plastic there. Now, let me ask you this. Can you scan at a super high resolution, like 0.2 millimeters, and then align that with a one millimeter, another scan? Or do they need to be the same, same resolution? So the way that we did it in this one, which is to do everything in one project, mm -hmm. uh, we weren't able to scan ah. at a lower resolution. But we could have opened up another project on the scanner, mm. scanned at the uh, 0.2 or lower uh, resolution. Yeah. And then once we bring in here, we can adjust the point distance. It has to be somewhat similar it has, uh, in order for it to align together. Okay. Uh, but even so, when it's adjusting a point distance, it's still keeping a lot of the detail that was captured in that 0.2 millimeter resolution. Okay, now if I wanted to take a 0.2 and just straight combine it with a one, I could use something like Geomagic. Exactly. Okay, so a separate software, reverse engineering, yeah. CAD, et cetera, we can still do that. All right, we got 20 million triangles from 10 million vertexes. That is impressive. Can we see color real quick? We can oh, back wow. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay, so, wow. I mean, look at that. So, okay, yeah. The, all this has the color, the front part we didn't use color, it's beautiful. So nice. you'll notice that there is a color difference and that's because in the laser HD mode we are getting closer. When we get closer to an object, the color camera is able to capture that area in actually higher color detail. Yeah. So that's one of the advantages of the laser HD mode uh -huh. with color. You can actually get more detail in wow. the color. Fascinating. 
Oh yeah, you can literally export straight to DesignX or X model. So DesignX, you could do DxGo too, I'm sure. Yeah. All of which we do sell here at Vision Miner. So dude, Eric, thank you so much for coming by and showing us that whole process. Uh, if you guys want to see more, or have any more questions, we'll do a free live video demo right here in this area. Uh, so just hit us up, shoot us an email, get us a phone call, and we'll get you set up with that so you can make sure you know that this or another scanner like the HX2 or the FreeScan Combo Plus is right for your business and your project to help you save time and money. That's what we're here to do. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next one.